Hey family, how you doing? I am your brother, Brian Meredith Ogaya. And welcome to Mati Marathi. Peace to you, peace to your home, peace to your family, peace to your community, peace to your ancestry. <clears throat> peace to my community, peace to my ancestry, and peace to the nation that you, I, and they are building. Peace also to the Gothic forces, the great spirit above, the mother earth below. This is M.T. Marathi, Soul Lightning. Obviously, some of you have been wondering where I've been. Um, the last year has been a rough year. <laughs> Let me just put it that way. Um, I may get into that towards the end of this video, but the spiritual growth um, that the last year has enabled me to do far um, exceeded what I expected starting at the beginning of the year. Clearly, the last three years, I have been publishing far less um, than I had in the previous three years before that. Um, there's an apology that I want to offer for that, but yet I go with the ancestors and, uh, there were times when I have recorded videos and the ancestor said, beautiful video, you can't publish that. There's times when I wanted to sit down and record a video. And I started actually recording the video and the ancestor said, great video, you can't release that. And then there's times when I wanted to sit down and record a video and had all the ideas right there. Didn't even have to write them down. They were clear as day. As soon as I sat down and hit record, dissipated. And after the first couple of times that that happened, I said, wait a minute. What are y'all doing? And they're like, yeah, just because we give you the information don't mean you get to put it on a video. Write it down. Stop acting up. So, you know, that's one of the reasons I haven't been publishing as much. And in fact, there's a couple of videos that I want to that I want to publish. Um, and it is the craziest damn thing. I can't find any of them anymore. They've like just falling into a hole and I can't find them. Um. Uh, I'll give you a great example of one of them. Maybe it'll turn up after I talk about it. Um, back in 2020, what could have been the last day that I was here on this planet, um, I had um, scheduled three or four videos that would have come out well after I transitioned. And one of the videos... And I remember thinking hard about it was this uh, video on the metaphysics of Michael Jackson's dancing. And I had put it up. It was going to come out actually on Halloween of 2020. And um, it was almost 30 minutes, maybe a little bit over 30 minutes long. Um, I actually wanted to release that this past Halloween. I couldn't find it. I went to the folders um, that I knew it would be in. It was nowhere. It was gone. It was gone. I was so disappointed. It's such a good video, too. It's such a good video because it doesn't only touch on Michael Jackson. It touches on um, um, Ariana Grande. It touches on uh, Lady Gaga, uh, Britney Spears, less Britney Spears. And there was one other one I'm forgetting. Um, I can't I can't remember who the other one is, but it was somebody who was big uh, back in 2019, 2020. I can't find it. It is absolutely gone. Um, I published another video over on my MT Marathi um, channel, which I've published a few videos over there, y'all that most of y'all ain't watched 
and their significant videos. Anyway, um, I, I forget what the topic was in the video, but I literally remember recording the video. The video was about 20 minutes long, it was a little bit under actually, and it was a wonderful little video. Somehow, some way, it was broken. It got snipped. So that almost half of the video is gone now. Disappeared. So, you know, I've had stuff. I've probably recorded in the last two years a hundred videos that either the ancestors were like, you can't publish, or um, they were like, yeah, that's that's great information. Don't release it. Or I went to record the dang video and they were like, yeah, no, we're going to just hold that hostage. You can't share that. In fact, uh, and then this will be the last thing I say about this and I'll get through the rest of it. Um, I started planning a significant video. It was going to probably be two and a half to three hours long. Um, during the spring of last year, I was going to get it done by the end of this past year. And it was on, um, a number of Egyptian gods and goddesses who have influenced what's happening and what's going to happen. And, um, I got through like two pages of prep work and the ancestors were like, yep, this is great information. Wonderful. If you record it, you can't share it. You can share aspects of it, but you can't share the whole thing. So, you know, in other words, um, I'm getting to a point where I'm starting to deal with some serious stuff. And unfortunately, when you start dealing with serious stuff, um, it becomes impractical to share that serious stuff with those who aren't also sharing or doing that serious work. And that's not to say that I don't respect the work that y'all do, um, but I, I, I wanna underscore something, and I've talked about this before on this channel. Most other people who are on YouTube doing metaphysics stuff, um, they are not doing it in a fashion that makes it practical. Um, they are not doing it in a fashion that not only makes it practical, um, but practically accessible to people like you, so you can make it practical. For a long time, I operated the same way they did. I apologize, man. My stomach is gurgling. I apologize for that. But um, I operated the same way they did. Uh, and the ancestors over the last three years have been trying to get me further and further away from that. So that the stuff that I present you, yes, it will help your higher mind work better and see better. But it'll also connect your higher mind to your lowest mind. So you can start pulling down your own information and putting it to work around you if you understand what i'm saying um it drives me absolutely crazy to listen to folks who have been amazing metaphysical teachers in the black community talking about flat earth nonsense i mean honestly it does Mainly because there is, a, there is an argument to be made that we exist on a plane unto itself, but that doesn't make the earth flat. Now, if you're looking at a rendition of the plane that we exist on from the ancestral level, it appears flat to them. Why? Just as a map appears flat to somebody who's using it 
um, to, let's say, plan some sort of military move. You lay it out flat. You don't make it curved. It makes it easier to perceive what you want to perceive. Those little things, like that which I said there, which matches metaphysics with reality, is really the reason the ancestors have limited the amount of information that I can put out. Because look, family, I can work with the ancestors to put out amazingly mind-stunning stuff that you and I won't both need to even understand for years, decades. But by the time some of that stuff is, is needed, the world's going to have progressed so much that these videos probably won't even be accessible anymore. Even if I wrote them down in a book, it's not even guaranteed that that book's going to make it until then. Not to say I'm not going to write a book. I will. But a lot of that stuff isn't practical. A lot of it is not practical and it never will be. It doesn't take metaphysics and combine it with reality. It speaks about metaphysics on planes that we only have access to if we grow to a certain spiritual level. Appreciating that, understanding that, grasping that, implementing that is really what the mysteries are about to an extent. Also about fighting evil. But if you remember, Bobby Hammond had a huge problem with the notion of that of what was good and evil. If there was even this idea that there was really good and evil when it came to the ancestral realms, there's clearly a distinction between good and evil. They don't call it good and evil. It's more light and darkness. It's more, I'm for God, you're against God. It's more, I'm for the universal source, you're against the universal source type of deal. And they both exist. And they both have credibility in this universe that we live in. However, one group is massively distorting these projects to the point where many of the projects are, thanks to them not playing by the rules, I guess that's who they are though, um, Many other projects are in danger of collapse. So, you know, that's something that has to be understood. It's not understood if, if you want to think of metaphysics or the mystery systems as academic. It's all about, syst um, not system, but information acquisition. No, it's deeper than that. It's far deeper than that. You know, I'm looking at a couple of books that I have, and I'm thinking about a couple of books that I have that demonstrate the callousness of how many white metaphysicians, white mystery seekers, how they treat the sacred information that goes into formulating and forming the mysteries. It's information acquisition for them. It's not sacred mysteries for them. We have to get beyond that. We do. And the only way that we get beyond that is we have to make metaphysics practical.
the Michael Jackson dance video that I recorded. I didn't realize this, but made metaphysics practical. I think the reason I am not able to find it nor publish it is because of the practicality of what I mentioned in the video. And I wasn't even aware of the significance of the information that I was presenting. So much so that I probably put something in there that the ancestors were like, yep, nope, that cannot. No, mm -mm. nope. Don't, don't, don't do that. So I get it. In fact, um, it's funny how this works. I was listening to gospel music before I got on here. And um, God and the ancestors really started coming through me and speaking to me about some stuff. Um, which is why this introduction was so necessary. And I didn't realize that until just now. You know, it's been uh, just over 16 minutes. And um, I didn't intend to talk about the videos that I hadn't published, that I had recorded, that I wanted to record it. I didn't intend to talk about that. I didn't intend to talk about um, the uh, making metaphys uh, metaphysical, <laughs> making metaphysics um, practical. But that's God. That's the ancestors. Now, we like to separate God from metaphysics. We like to separate the ancestors from metaphysics. Some people do, not all people. Y'all get me when I say that. And that's a huge mistake. Because a lot of the information I give you comes from God. Sure, a lot of it comes from the ancestors. I'm always talking about them. But God's in there. God is in there. And so I talked about all these things because it set me up to talk about the thing that I actually came to talk to you about, which is the metaphysics in the Gaza conflict. Um, for much of last year, I felt odd. Things fell out of place. When Damar Hamlin fell and died on national TV before being brought back to life, his heart stopped. So he was technically, from a biological standpoint, he was dead. His brain was still working. Many of his other organs were still functioning. But from a biological standpoint, he was dead. When that happened, though, I knew that was significant. I just didn't know why. I knew that there was a power force that was speaking to America in that instance you had the Buffalo Bills named first after the sacred animal of many native indigenous peoples a sacred animal that was slaughtered uh, to make room for white people to conquer this land and do nothing with it except for destroy it. But that's for another day. The first of, again, a sacred name, Buffalo. The Buffalo is sacred. The second name from a criminal, Buffalo Bills. Buffalo Bill, a criminal. They were playing the Cincinnati Bengals. Now, the name Cincinnati has quite the history. 
one that you should definitely look up. But the Bengals, the Bengal Tigers, there used to be um, a small, what we would think of as a jungle cat, but it wasn't really a jungle cat, that roamed, the par uh, that roamed North America. It's, an, it's extinct now. Um, there's also obviously jaguars and panthers and the like, but that cat used to hunt bison. Crazy enough as it was, but it would. Um, it preferred deer and other smaller mammals, but it would take down a bison too. Obviously, I don't have to tell you the significance of cats in African spiritual and mystery systems. But I will say that these two teams meeting in Cincinnati. With what happened with DeMar Hamlin, rendered, how do I want to put this? Rendered so where Cincinnati is located. There used to be several ritual spots that the ancestral native indigenous people would use to contact the spirit realm. In fact, there's one currently still very active where the Cincinnati Bengals play. The door which exists there enables two type of entities to come into the planet or onto the planet. The first is ancestral inner, uh, entities from the native indigenous peoples who used to use that area for ritual. The second is a plethora of entities that come from the ancestral realm most of them good seldom anybody bad gets through there because they don't typically have um uh, access to that area or to that door but all of them from the lowest to the middle level of the ancestral realm. The energies are rather unimpressive, is what I'm getting at. At least that's how the ancestors explain it to me. However, periodically on certain special occasions, the rituals would call forward higher in energy entities from the higher areas and sometimes the nether areas of the ancestral realm. They would call them through for various reasons. Because this calling, which, which was predictable, hasn't taken place in dozens of years going all the way back to like 1915. The higher entities became concerned, especially since there's constantly all this energy moving through there. Moreover, there was something coming that they were concerned about. They had been warned about it 
and they had watched as the energies gathered to allow this thing to happen. And so they had been slowly moving since they hadn't been called. They had to do this methodically. Once when they're called, there's a chute that opens up from our plane to their plane, which makes transitioning from their plane down to ours very quick and very easy. But when they're not called, they have to take their vibratory frequency and condense it as they go from theirs down to ours. And as they condense, they have to make sure that the vibratory frequency itself does not lessen, which takes time, patience, and skills. On the night that DeMar Hamlin died for a brief moment, the reason it took them so long to keep him stable and to get him stable was because when that hit happened, his heart was going through a, a rhythm adjustment that is very natural. It occurs in us all. And when the hit happened and that rhythm adjustment, that recalibration was knocked off, it was like an atomic bomb going off. Because the rhythm of the guy's heart and his heart literally collapsed into one another as they hit. And so it was like each of them creating, when your heart beats, it's like taking a bomb and channeling the energy for a positive. When you hit somebody in your heartbeats, your heart sometimes pauses really quickly. Really, really quickly. It's not, it's hardly even perceptible. It'll literally be like mid-beat and then pause. And then continue like nothing happened. Well, when both of their hearts went mid-beat pause, they collapsed on one another and created an explosion. And that gave enough energy to those entities to come down. When they came down, in that moment when both heartbeats collapsed into one another, They utilized that silence to appear, to take a look around quickly, to assess what was happening. When they started retracting back and they left a few in their stead, when they left, when they started retracting, should I say, when they started retracting back, that's when he started getting stable. The balance that it took him to get when um, he was in the hospital, the reason that was done, the reason that took so long was because those entities that they left were bound to his energy. And it took those entities a little bit of time to disconnect their energy from his. And during that process, you know, it took him a little time to wake up. It took him a little time to get stable. This is why he's different. And he feels different. He doesn't understand why. But it's... He has... A... Shaw... That now covers him. Because he helped to bring through something powerful that is very godly. He's never going to be the same again. And if he knows what's good for him, he'll get involved in a really good AME church. 
because DeMar has some work to get done now. He is never going to be the same again. Ever. Neither is the guy who hit him. And the guy who hit him doesn't even recognize yet how big of a change he's in for. Because he helped bring those entities in. In fact, he's due to have a daughter in the next two to three years who is going to be a direct descendant from those higher entities. Somebody else he knows is going to have one too, who he has touched wonderfully. Both of them need to get into a deep AME church if they know what was good for him anyway. They also took the option, the opportunity, should I say, because understand, family, nobody knew this was going to happen. God did. I imagine the archangels did. But nobody knew this was going to happen who works constantly on this realm. Nobody knew it. God used DeMar Hamlin's situation to bring into this world something powerful because this world's going to need it. I don't know, excuse me, I don't know if y'all remember, but prior to what happened with DeMar Hamlin, things seemed to kind of be leveling out a little bit. Like the energy seemed to be leveling out a little bit. And then the DeMar Hamlin thing happened and it was kind of like, wow, what the hell happened to the end? There are moments in times where there's sacrificial people who don't die or who aren't imprisoned with their sacrifice. DeMar Hamlin was a divine momentary sacrifice, a vessel which God used to bring something great into the world. Starting in July of 2022, the Archangels, and when I say the Archangels, understand there's many groups that are attached to the Archangels. Um, give me a second, family. I apologize. All right. Back. Had to go and grab me some water. Um, so uh, back in July of 2022, the Archangels, and again, many groups associated with the Archangels who oversee the transmission of what we would think of as transitioning death um, when associated with either major events where there's a lot of people involved or tragedies where it's contained but it's still, you know, it impacts a it impacts more than a few people. Um, their limitation it depends on the group you're talking about, but th these particular folks only deal with cas with mass casualty events of a hundred and more people. Um, these archangels are the ones who. Um, some fairy tales call like the Valkyries. They're the ones who go down and they have to pick up the souls who are disembodied because of this, whatever has happened. Uh, obviously, uh, September 11th in this country is an example of their work. Um, now, because... You know, throughout the history of humanity, mass casualty events have varied from, you know, a few dozen to, you know, tens of thousands of people dead. These groups are varied and particular. Now, we've been blessed. We haven't had a war where 
you know, in a very short period of time, we've seen 10, 20, 30, 40,000 people dead uh, probably since the 90s. It's been a while. Um, I, I'm, I'm not sure if we saw that with Iraq in the early 2000s, but maybe, maybe. Pardon me for not knowing. Either way. In July of 2022, energy started amassing in Israel. And a team of archangels went down to investigate the energy that was amassing and to see if it could be dissipated. The energy suggested that there was going to be a mass casualty event. Well, after some investigation, they began to work on dispelling the informa uh, the um, energy and fragmenting it and basically breaking it up, making sure this mass casualty event didn't happen. Something weird happened, though. The more they worked with the energy to get rid of it, the stronger it became. Finally, towards the beginning of this year, it was actually late December, late, late December, between Christmas and New Year, um, there was an attempt by what we might think of as high magicians to not only get rid of the energy, but to sever the connections that were making, making it possible. Before they could get their work fully done, they were called what we say behind the veil. And they returned from behind the veil. That's a conversation with the emissaries from God. Convinced, told that they were to leave the energy alone. The archangels were allowed to continue their work. But after DeMar Hamlin's death and resurrection, which is what it was, some new, what we would think of as entities, some high angels appeared on the scenes. And they refused to speak about why they were there. The energy, though, this was the beginning of 2023 now. The energy began to harden. It began to uh, thicken. And this was worrisome because that meant not only was there going to be a mass casualty event, but it was going to have far reaching consequences. Work intensified. Then sometime in March, And I don't know how necessarily to explain this. The energy began to form what I think of as knots. Now, energy that forms knots, and yeah, K-N-O-T-S, has the potential to create outreach pots, meaning when the energy is what's the word I'm looking for? When the event that it foretells occurs, these knots are thrown and they land particular places according to human will. And according to human um, desire and destination. And, Im and immediately when they land, they connect back to that original source. And they begin to pile new energy into this new place. And still pour energy, usually negative energy, back into that original space. Making it 
so that the fragmentated energy that typically would be dissipated, as soon as it fragments, the angels come in, they dissipate it, make sure it can't recover itself. Wherever that knot comes from, it immediately recomposes that energy that was around it and then builds it out. This is always a worry, a worrisome um, development because that means it's going to spread. Whatever is going to happen is going to spread and it's not going to be good. I remember when the ancestors showed me this back into uh, back in October of um, 2023. I didn't know what I was seeing. Anyway, by June, July, June of 2023 the archangels had counted 37 knots many of which had increased since they began to form uh, in size and that was concerning finally they approached again the high magicians and demanded that they do their work the high magicians saw a council behind the veil and were given permission to do their work. While they were able to peel off some of the energy, obviously, clearly, they weren't able to disrupt it all. And in fact, and I can't go into this too much, they were able to place something within the energy to keep it from liquidating completely the entire populace that it sought to envelop. And by envelop, what the ancestors mean is um, pour uh, venom into to make venomous, to make dedicated to doing more destruction. When an energy like this shatters, is, uh, is the only word I can use, um, before it dissipates, when the event actually happens, the energy <sighs> does that it shatters and then the archangels come in and dissipates it um when we talk about the trauma the long-lasting effects of a lot of um uh events it is because when this energy shatters those pieces get stuck and absorbed because it's environmental by the auras of the people who are there just as when somebody is killed, um, murdered by a drone, by an airstrike, by a bomb, by a sniper, when their life is ended prematurely, the aura that is around them, which contrary to popular beliefs, is not 100% from your soul. It's actually, it's, think of it as an embryo sac that is tied both to you and apart from you. Um, it is you, but it's not you. It's, it's you, but it's not of you, if you can understand that. Um, when your life is ended prematurely, that tears it rips it explodes and that sticks to people who love you and it sticks in many different ways including you know when it explodes the strands which connect heart to heart that's how your relationships are formed um the strands get thrown 
the strands get blown apart. And that pain that comes from that is not only absorbed by you, who are still living, but sometimes when that explosion happens, um, part of that exploding aura pushes through the um, connection that you have with another person and <sighs> explodes in your heart. Thus, when you talk about having a scar from something traumatic that was violent um, imposing, that's what you're actually talking about. I know it's deep, right? So, you know, that helps uh, create trauma. Um, that negative energy, which is a psychic energy. I mean, understand, family. You're... <sighs> the levels of energy integration that we go through on a daily basis is absolutely phenomenal and we do not even recognize it we don't but that is why um having practical mysteries are so important that's why having practical metaphysics is so important because once you understand the energy integration you're talking about. When you talk, when, when you understand the um, energy intercoursing that you're talking about, when you understand the various levels of will, W I L L, that we're talking about, the world changes. The world changes significantly. Um, so they were able to place something in there that would prevent some of the the the, the ultimate goals um, of envelope of uh, yeah enveloping um, the population the way that the energy wanted to, and then you know their instructions were you could do this, but you can't go any further. Um, this is a willpower thing that's happening. This is a free will thing that's happening. We just got to be there to do whatever we can do um, once when it goes off. It went off on October 7th. <clears throat> it went off on October 7th. Now, maybe there's something to be said about the fact that the date was October 7th, 2023. Or maybe it's just coincidence. 24? Who knows? Um... Yeah, who knows? Um, I mean, ten seven seven. Who knows? Anyway, um, and immediately, as soon as it happened on October seventh, as soon as that energy blew up and those knots flew, and they landed, and when they landed, they were seen to expand rapidly. Some of which, some of those expansions with other knots in them. Panic. Panic amongst the archangels who had been watching the energy. Who had watched the beginning of um, the dissipation the day before. The first, the first um, knots were not thrown when the attack actually took place. The first Knots were thrown a week before. That was how they knew things were about to happen. And those knots expanded quickly, rapidly. And the fear grew. You want to know why 
there is such an outpouring against what is happening in Gaza. It's because there is an outpouring in heaven. There is severe concern that what is happening today because of the energy footprint that is being left is laying the seeds for the third world war. In fact, some of the archangels already believe that the third world war has started. There is an odd amassing of dark energy in the middle uh it's so funny because they call it the midland the hinterland in the united states and somewhere near in the middle of kansas and it's such a weird bit of energy because it covers like most of the state like literally three-fourths of the state it spills into uh the state to the uh uh to the north and to the south I can't really go into that, but I can tell you it's there and it's been there for two or three years now. And there's concern about what that actually means. They're working to try to dissipate it, but it can, I can't speak to it. There's also another one, um, that is in California, um, in the Northern part of California, um, yeah where the where california comes down like this and bends that line right there is kind of the center of this energy there's that there's another one and this one really concerns them it's in washington dc it's over washington dc um and there's a ton of dark energy there where something they're worried about it. I'll just put it that way. Anyway. While the high magicians and the um, archangels have been successful at deploying some techniques to break up some of the energy south africa's push to see what's going on as genocide is part of the greater divine plan to stop this thing from triggering the next world war and and to stop the seeds from being planted there are There are other knots that have been thrown that have not been able to be broken up. And that's deeply concerning. There's one in Syria that has not been broken up. It's been gaining strength. There's one in Iran that has not been broken up. It's been gaining strength. There's another one in the southern part of Egypt that has not been broken up. It's been gaining strength. There's one in Israel that has not been broken up. It has been gaining strength. There is one in the West Bank. There is still several in Gaza. There, there is one. Um, yeah, that is just, it's where it is. Um, the reason there is a huge outpouring and I need to go back to this is the same reason that there was a huge outpouring for Vietnam the answer is explained to me the danger in Vietnam was not that World War three was going to happen in Vietnam or from Vietnam the danger was that it was going to spill over into China and it was going to inflame the region and it was going to cause massive, massive destabilization problems, which would have in the short run 
looked very good for the West. In the long run, would have looked very bad for uh, the West and the world because it would have brought in the 2020s or 30s would have brought to power a absolutely bloodthirsty tyrant who 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 would have because China would have lost a portion some of its southern po um, provinces would have been able to gain their independence um, he would have forced reunification harshly and then would have went after like Singapore and some of the other places where ethnic Chinese actually do live but have their own country and he there wouldn't have been anything the world could have done to stop him and you'll understand why that is as we move into the 2030s and the ability to fund certain aspects of the United States wanes we're in for a hell of a ride, y'all. We are in for a hell of a ride. Um, people are protesting because the divine knows this can spin out of control quick and terribly. Quick and terribly. So do your peace rituals, y'all. And if you don't have them, but you are really, really uh, spiritual, ask God. God will give you some peace rituals to do. Questions, comments, concerns, leave them below. I already know <laughs> there's about to be a sister who's going to be real happy that I put this up. I love you. Uh, there's going to hopefully be a couple of brothers also who I know. And actually, should I say, there's like three or four sisters who, who tend to like this work. And there's a couple of brothers that I know. So, you know, y'all, let me know what you think. Um, hopefully, um, my goal this year is to get w at least one of these a month. Um, my, my actual goal is to get like two of them a month or more, but we'll see. Again, guys, questions, comments, concerns, you know, you can always, always leave them below. I am your brother, Vimeir Diesel Gaia, and thank you for joining me on MT Marathi. MT Marathi, y'all. Oh, so light now.